Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk welcome to Plathville and also unexpected. Yes. Had a couple of great shows and I'm super excited to get into it with you, Beatrice. Yeah, me too. Now, before we do, we have to issue you our disclaimer. Listen up, please. Hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have unconventional and I dare say stupid opinions. And so if you're so silly off, you might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. <laughs> but if you're down to just have a conversation and get in the dumpster with a couple of fat raccoons, welcome to this well, dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> and if you are down with us and jive with the fatness, follow us on Instagram <laughs> at, reality, the fatness. Yeah. at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at. 100%. Okay. And if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share by copying the link. Yeah. Okay. Just copy that please link. You don't have to send it to anybody. Just, no, just copy, copy it. it. And subscribing, because every little thing that you do helps us in the algorithm, and that helps us to grow. We're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers. It's a crime. It is It's a, a crime, crime that we don't have more subscribers. We are so fucking funny. We offer original content. Yeah. We're not scared to give you our commentary. No. Where are the subscribers on YouTube? YouTube literally has a, a person on here that shows his dick and butthole <laughs> for everyone to see. He's got 400,000 subscribers or whatever, and he's allowed to be on here. Maybe that's the answer. I guess. So you're going to show your butthole? I mean, maybe. I mean, when oh we are God. doing like peak sister wives in season podcasts, so just audio only. Yeah. We've got like many thousands of many. downloads many many tens of thousands yeah. of downloads but on youtube what the hell i i think they're censoring us you because do? we're so great we're shadow banned <laughs> but dick and butthole guy <laughs> is allowed to be on here it's not fair it is not fair so if you could do your part and just do all the things that Please. we said we would really appreciate it thank, thank you thank you in advance Appreciate it. All right. I understand that we have somebody who called in on the speak pipe. We do. By the way, if you guys want to call us, you absolutely can. All you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe. You have 90 seconds to pop off and let us know how you feel about whatever it is that we're covering or not covering. Yeah. We love to hear you and it's free. And you can be anonymous. And we'll probably put you on the pod. Most likely. So we'd love to hear from you. So who called in well, we have a message from kelly ann and i think it's a plathville okay question all right hi delia and beatrice i had to pause your new episode and come here to say beatrice no how can you have so much grace for kim in this moment and dislike olivia so much just from looking at the two of them together on the show i think kim is a terrible person she is, she doesn't take any accountability for herself. At least Olivia is trying. Sure, she can be stuck up or snotty sometimes. I still think she has the best intention. And she's the one on the show who is trying to better herself, as you ladies know. And I think everything that Kim is doing is a publicity stunt. She sought out the show. She is making all these terrible decisions and not talking about it on camera. And... She has all of these platitudes to say about her children, but I look at patterns. You had decades to change your behavior. You saw what it was doing to your older kids, and you didn't decide to do anything until you didn't have a choice. All right, well, that's my two cents on Kim Plath. Thank you so much. Hope you all have a great day. What was her name? Wow. Kelly Ann. Come Kelly at me, bro. Ann came for you, God, Beatrice. Come at me. She got up in that raccoon ass. <laughs> I love it. She. <laughs> did god damn well i wonder what she thought when she pressed play back on the episode because yeah. depending on where she stopped it last week mm -hmm. she might not have heard us or me get up in the ass of kim plath yeah. and, for, and olivia and olivia but also we had a bit of a fair or you had a bit of a fairer take for olivia last week i, I did yeah and i actually had grace for her 
on this episode too, which we'll get into later. But I mean, historically, the reason why I've had a problem with Olivia Plath is because she kind of puts on an air that she's like better than everybody because she's so healed and so much more emotionally mature, but like she's not acknowledging any of her toxic traits. I have a problem with that. However, Kim Plath is also doing the same fucking thing. (laughs) She's not acknowledging any of her faults and not taking any accountability on camera. I do think Kim and Olivia both produce themselves on camera, though. So I think they're kind of one and the same. The only saving grace for Olivia is that she is young. And we've talked about this. She's got room to grow, whereas Kim's old. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's had a lot of years to change. And the only reason why she's changing now is because she's getting her box eight. So, I mean, I get it. That's fair. Kim, there's a lot of criticisms that we can give Kim Plath. And we do. And we totally do. I mean, I in particular cannot oh, yeah. stand her. She hates her. I, I mean, I just, I, but I think one of the reasons that you have a little bit like a smidge more grace for Kim, at least recently, is because she does kind of remind you of your mom. A little bit, yeah. And that might be a relationship that you're currently like looking at and becoming aware of. And so maybe she's a little bit archetypal for you. Yeah. And stuff that you're confronting in your own life right now. So that might be part of it. But at the same time, I really do think that you call her out on her bullshit for the most part. Totally, yeah. Now, the thing about Olivia for me is I will concede that she um, does have a lot of uh, intelligence. She does have a lot of therapized speak. Mm -hmm. Like on the surface, one would say, yeah, she's um, going to therapy and she's working on herself Mm -hmm. and she's moving on and having experiences and that's what it looks like I worry though underneath that whether it's real and the thing about narcissists and I'm not saying that she is I'm not diagnosing anybody even though I'm very spiritual (laughs) (laughs) I'm very spiritual Uh, but the thing about narcissists is you really don't want to send them to therapy because they for the most part can't be helped and secondarily they co-opt a lot of the language and the resources, and then start to use that as another weapon in their toolbox to hurt other people. Now, I'm not saying Olivia is doing that. I am saying I'm a little worried about it because I think I'm sniffing with my raccoon nose some narc tendencies. But again, I say when I was her age, I was a complete trash bag. Oh, yeah. I was a complete free radical, just ruining shit and damaging the world at that time in my life. So I believe in her. I think she can get her shit together, and I hope that she does. I hope so, too. And, I mean, I try to go back and forth, like, especially this season. I've been hard on Olivia the last five seasons. I'm going to be real. I have not liked her. Appropriately so. I mean, she's been terrible. But, like, this season I've been trying to, like, give her a little bit more grace. And, like, especially this episode, I'm like, okay, I can see where you're trying to, like, mend things or trying to heal things it's just like you had said the therapized speak I don't like that I don't like when people use therapy talk as a way to like come off like oh yeah I'm like so healed or whatever you can say all this shit but if you're not actually living it and not actually embodying what you're preaching it don't mean anything yeah and I think it's a bit problematic that on the nights that the episodes air like Olivia's up on her Instagram kind of passive aggressively going after other members on the show yeah and I think she came out and made a video recently about her father Mm -hmm. which I think is connected to Ethan bringing up her family in this episode and how she can so easily just walk away and cut ties and so her response to that isn't to say oh well let me think about that like maybe that strikes up some sort of a truth in me that I need to look at or talk to my therapist about no on the night of she's making a post about her dad and um, she has every right to do that but it just it's a little problematic to me as to whether she's going through the process or whether she just wants us to think that she is exactly but Kelly and I get it yeah and as it concerns fucking Kim Plath oh yeah screw her of the wretched eyeliner and lipstick (laughs) She is like an old dog, like we said last episode. Mm -hmm. She's not going to learn any new tricks. She's trying to do what Olivia is doing so much better than her, which is to pretend. I'm sorry. Or just to pretend and put on the face of somebody who's got a great life, who's in a great place. But meanwhile, she's getting DUIs. She's an adulteress. Her adult kids are side-eyeing her. Her littles are also side-eyeing her. Like, the world isn't perfect in Kim Plath land. No. And I mean... 
on camera, it seems like she's loving her kids. And I can kind of buy into that. I am a little naive to that. Because I'm like, oh, I would love for Kim to like grow up a little bit. And like try to mend things with her older kids. She ain't going to. Now, whether she's doing that off camera, I don't fucking know. I don't know any of these people's real lives. We're just watching them on fucking TV. Yeah, and they're all lying. I mean, totally. Except for Ethan. I mean, and I'm not saying that Ethan's a good person. But I, I don't I don't know that Ethan... Is can really lie. lying. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know that he can. Um, or Micah. Or Micah. I yeah. think Mariah can. But we'll get into the episode. Yeah. So I just want to say, Kellyanne, thank you very much thank for you. the phone call. Even though you're getting up me. in that ass, and you I love fight? to see it personally. I you want to fucking fight? It. We love to hear your opinions. We're not always going to agree with them, but yeah. like it starts a conversation, and we adore that. So thank yeah. you, Kellyanne. Thank you. Catch me outside though. <laughs> She's joking, right? I'm just joking. Right? Okay, let's get into the uh, most recent episode of Welcome to Plathville, season six, episode six? Episode five. Episode five. Entitled, How Do I Get Riz? Oh, God. <laughs> Very black. Lord. So cringe. So we kind of start off with the younger girls and Kim motherfucking Plath and Ken motherfucking Palmer going to Taekwondo class. And Micah's there for some reason. I think it's because he's still there from dealing with her boat or whatever. I don't think so. I think he's driving up specifically to film scenes because maybe Weird. at this point, his girlfriend, who we haven't really seen, doesn't want him filming there or doesn't oh, want to be a part of it. But that's it's a good theory. It's a check for Micah Plath. So that's why he's making sure to insert himself into all these very various and sundry scenes maybe he needs to make money yeah (laughs) i think he does that's a good point but this is kind of an interesting scene because the little girls are doing taekwondo and micah is kind of reflecting on his childhood and he's like i wish i could have done extracurricular activities i wish my mom would have carted me off to sports i probably would have been a professional athlete by now okay and i'm like would you sure (laughs) sure babe (laughs) naive right but we do kind of hear from kim about this and she's like well i mean i had nine fucking kids and i couldn't physically cart all of them off to all these extracurricular then why have nine fucking kids i mean i don't know why did barry impregnate her with no both of them like why are you having nine kids that you can't fully support and give like a full and healthy life to. And if give you're them gonna activities, be yeah. So like spread thin. Right. I agree. But she does kind of talk about how, you know, the younger girls didn't get to have the same childhood experience that the older kids did on the farm. And so there you go. It just, you know, it evens out. And I'm like, mm. it's a very parent thing to say. Like, oh, you know, I fucked up with the older kids. The younger kids get it better. But like, whatever, it evens out. And that's what I think really bothers me about her is that she doesn't go deep enough with her acknowledgement around how dysfunctional it was for the kids, whatever right. season of their lives they were in, whether it was Mariah and how she dressed and how she was an individual, whether it was Ethan who didn't want to do his homework and like all of the things that she should have done as a parent that she could at least acknowledge. Like yeah. the kids already know this. The kids love you anyway, but to have you actually say it out loud and acknowledge it, I think would go a long way with them. Agreed. But she can't do it she's very very clogged emotionally like it's very hard for i know we're seeing tears from time to time but it's very hard for her to process emotions and certainly to communicate them oh for sure and like we've talked about before like to for her to actually sit in all of her shame and regret i mean that would be a lot that's why she drinks (laughs) yeah i mean we assume yes (laughs) um and then we have mariah and lydia going over to ethan's apartment to have coffee and the only thing that was like interesting to me about this whole conversation was when they were talking about magicians and how Ethan was like if I could be a magician right now or if I could have one grant me my wish I would just wish to disappear yeah and nobody to find me I'm right. like yikes dude yeah depressing yeah he's in a really low point yeah for sure and that's because He's in the process of divorcing Olivia and while Lydia and Mariah are there right now to kind of help him in this last stage of packing up the apartment, Olivia is soon to arrive in Minnesota and they're going to have their potentially final meeting. Yeah, which we'll get to yeah. at the end of this and that was fucking sad. Yep. And then we have Micah 
and Barry going over to one of their rental properties, which was a really nice yes. rental. I'm like, God damn, how many rental properties I, do you I have? I know, right? Because there was that one rental property where Kim went out on a little kayak or mm-hmm. something. It wasn't this house. No. They have the farm. Yep. They have the big house. Mm-hmm. They have the apartment above the dance studio. They also have the dance studio. Yep. So they're holding quite the property portfolio. Yep. I'm very interested to see how they split that. I, and that's probably why they're at an impasse is what Barry says or that they're in marriage limbo because they're having to split all of that. And you know, Kim's being like, I want 50%. Bitch. She should get it. I mean, yeah. I mean, they were married for what? Fucking 30 years. Or 25 something? years. Like, yeah, she mm-hmm. should. But do we not think that Barry wants to give up the coins? Do we think that Barry wants to make it difficult? Do we think, because Barry's certainly not going to say it, nobody's obviously going to tell us how they're really feeling, but do we think Barry is pissed off because his wife left him and cheated on him? Probably. I I would would be. be. I would be too. And I'd be like, I don't want to give you all of this shit and spousal support and child support. Like, she's probably asking for the full Mm -hmm. thing. I mean, that's typical. And she should get some child support. She should probably get a little spousal support, Not if it's 50-50, which is what Barry is asking for. He's asking for those littles 50% of the time. I wish we could get more insight in this, but they're not going to say shit. No. Barry's being very respectful, though. He's just like, we're at an impasse. Like, he's not saying anything. He's not talking shit. Kind of like how Ethan's not talking any shit with Olivia. Oh, well, he kind of talked a little shit, Beatrice, when they're going over him setting up a dating profile. And oh, he's talking yeah. about the kind of woman that he would like to date first and foremost. She's got to have a good sense of humor. We've got to be able to laugh together. And I would appreciate if she was at least somewhat fit, right? <laughs> somewhat healthy and fit. Yeah. And I'm like, and then he smiled, kind of a coy little smile. And Micah laughed. And I felt like... That was just a joke between them that I totally got. He's talking about Kim not being fit. Oh, yeah. And healthy. Well, and like if we recall in the earlier seasons, Kim kind of mentioned that. Like Kim would talk about how Barry would call her fat. What? Yes. I remember in the earlier seasons. Yeah, girl. I don't remember that. Did Barry really call her fat? I think. Yeah, that's according to Kim. I don't remember that. According to Kim. We watched all those seasons. I don't recall that at all. Oh, maybe I blotted it from my awareness because that's fucked up. It is fucked up. But true. I mean, <laughs> got that sugar. Blood. I mean, when everybody in the family is at their optimal weight and super physically fit and then the mom who forbids everyone from having sugar and processed fats and stuff is 60 pounds overweight. Like, yeah, there's an issue. I mean, I don't know if she was drinking. I mean, I have my suspicions. She been drinking. Barry didn't know she was drinking because I don't think Barry drinks. You can hide it. I I don't know, girl. But yeah, Mm -hmm. it's just Barry wants somebody different. I think Mm -hmm. Barry can envision a world for himself where he's got this tight little aerobics Pilates (laughs) CrossFit mama and they laugh about stuff and drink their kombucha. Oh, totally. Yeah, I like that for him. I want that for him. Yeah. And Micah apparently is getting DMs from people wanting to hook up with Barry, which do we believe that? I have a hard time personally believing (laughs) that just because I have my own like pattern of attraction and men who I think are hot and Barry's not it. Barry's not it. Like he's got a nice figure. He's got a nice physique, but it's that head girl. It's it's from the neck down. It's the C3PO of it all. And like everybody's been saying, like I've been saying, just shave off your head. (laughs) Shave shave off your head. Shave off your whole head. Just shave it off, honey. Get a head transplant. No. Yeah. Shave off your hair. Grow a fucking beard to hide them lips. Or lack thereof. Or non-lips. <laughs> and then you'd be great. You're such a body shaming bitch. <laughs> You're calling Kim Flat fat. I am not. Well, but she is. <laughs> but she is. So we're both body shaming. We are. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I have problems. <laughs> If you're but we're crying in over it, fuck off. That's what we do in dumpsters. <laughs> I mean, sorry. Yeah, and I hate Kim. I hate her. She's I'm with worst. Kellyanne. I agree. I agree. And then we hear Barry trying to learn what Riz means. Okay. Trying to learn slang. He doesn't know what a DM is. That made me laugh. Yeah, he's a nerd, honey. I, he is he's a, a dork. goob. Yeah. He needs to go on FarmersOnly.com. Probably. Yeah. Or yeah. Christian Mingle. Can I just, before we move on to whatever's next, can I just take <laughs> a moment to suss out my feelings around Barry sitting there with his 
master's degree, talking to his son who's talking about trying to cobble together a business for himself, building fences yeah. down in Florida yeah. or landscaping because that's all he can do or maybe be an actor. But I'm like, I'm sorry, Micah, maybe like if you date Andy Cohen, maybe something could happen <laughs> in your career. Andy I Cohen. think Andy Cohen would love that. Oh, totally. But I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. You're, I don't think you're going to be an actor. I don't think Mariah's going to be a singer. I don't think no. any of these kids are going to make it. But Barry, how does this feel knowing that your son is trying to rub two sticks together or two stones together to make something catch fire because you've disabled them from being able to have their own future like you have with all of your properties sitting there wondering where you get to move and Micah doesn't even have a job. I mean, it's just glaring to me. It pisses me off so badly. Yeah, it's like they robbed them of their choice to do whatever they wanted to do. Now they have to choose between being an actor or a model or fencing and landscaping, which are, I mean, those are real jobs. Of course. Like those yes. are needed and everything. And you can have a very successful agriculture or whatever business. That's fine. But does he want to do that? Probably not. I wouldn't want to build fences. Not every in fucking South day. Florida. Absolutely. I mean, not. but compare and contrast with what Barry's able to exactly. amass for himself. Yeah. It's not fair. No, it's, it's just not. it's just glaringly unfair and it makes me so, so angry. I agree. And then we have before we get to Ethan and Olivia, we'll save that for the last. Okay. We have Mariah going to Kim's houseboat that has no power. Because that <laughs> booty ass sewer dock. I mean houseboat with a burnt out plug that dingy just, af i can't humid he, she's in florida like what are we doing hot got to turn off the ac to make some toast i mean why Kim? i don't understand she don't live there no well and like we said a couple episodes ago right like it's probably because she's boinking ken palmer and doesn't want the kids there but i'm like couldn't you get like a airbnb or something yeah or like a little studio or something or just like a little one bedroom like what are we doing the girls can share like it's super easy why a houseboat i don't understand. so that we think you have a sense of adventure <laughs> and you're quirky which is what mariah seems to think she has in common with you yeah you know we're both independent and if we get a wild hair we're gonna do it even though people don't think we should well, I thought that was funny, though, that she was making that comparison. Because it's true. They make bad choices. They do. I mean, tattoos. I mean, tattoos. Look at that tattoo. Her boyfriends. Like, right. you know. So it, it totally tracks. Mm -hmm. But I thought this conversation with Kim was interesting. Because Kim's, like, really wanting to know how Ethan's doing. Yes. Because Mariah get just to got that. back from Minnesota. And she's asking. She immediately asks about him. Like, so how is he doing? How's he doing with a divorce? And then Mariah also talks about her conversation with Olivia, which makes Kim shudder in her sugar body. Oh, God. <laughs> that was interesting to yeah. me. She seems really apprehensive to have Mariah or perhaps any of her children maintain contact with Olivia. Mm -hmm. The question would be why? Like Mariah's an adult now. Like Mariah can make right. her own choices. What are you so scared of? Like, are you afraid that maybe Olivia will wield influence again over Mariah and your other children? Yeah. Are you afraid that Olivia will come out with more information and you don't want to have to deal with that? Not unlike the credit card situation. Yeah. I think she wants to completely... Um, isolate and kick out Olivia Plath from not just the family, but the television show. And mm. so the more of her kids that are still involved with Olivia, the more of a problem it is for her. She wants her gone. Yeah. And I mean, I can see why, though, because Olivia was the one that like publicly came out with the credit card story, which the family did not want to bring out to light. And allegedly it was worked out between Kim and Ethan, and then Olivia drops the bomb on TV for everybody to see, and then it causes us this big old fucking rift. But Olivia had been causing a lot of divide in the family as well. So, I mean, like, I can understand why Kim would be apprehensive, but I do think she's totally wanting to control mm -hmm. the older it kids. It makes her very it. uneasy. Yes. Um, I do think she wants to control it. Um, but then she kind of shifts in... What she's talking about when she starts to get into marriage and mm -hmm. whether love is enough to keep a to keep a relationship or a marriage afloat or together and how Mariah just has all those stars in her eyes. She does. And she believes that love is enough. But Kim's like, it ain't enough, honey. <laughs> Take it from me. 
Like you can have the feeling of that, but if it's not demonstrated, if it's not practically applied, then what do you really have? Like if you're not spending time together, if you're not, you know, sacrificing some of yourself so that you can showcase your partner, if you're not doing all of these things that are a demonstration of love, then yeah, it, it's not enough. And I agree with her. Oh, I do too. When she said love is an action, I'm like, that's yes, based. It's a that's verb. totally what it is. So yeah, when Olivia told Mariah that love wasn't enough, Mariah's like, well, but it is. Uh, you can love each other and you can work on it. But like, whatever. That's just a very youthful answer. I that's mean, a very like childlike. Yeah, it's a very yeah. childlike answer. Yeah. Very naive. Yes. Because she doesn't really know. Like, she's mm-hmm. never been mm-hmm. married. She's never been in a really long-term relationship that's worked out. So I'm wondering if she's connecting it to whoever this mystery man is who I think she still has feelings for. And of course, we see in the preview that he's going to make an appearance at her concert. I know. Her concert. Who is it? He's going to show up. Um, So I think she's still got feelings for him. And I'm wondering if this means she still loves him. Probably. She's writing a whole album about him. Does she get back together with him? I don't know. I'm very, very curious to see as we go on. I bet she will get back together with him. But then her and Kim kind of share a nice moment where she talks about like, how she after the breakup from this last guy she drove all the way up back home at four in the morning and stayed with kim and they cried together and i thought that was like actually a really sweet moment between kim and olivia yes well mariah but sorry mariah (laughs) yes same div but i'm like you know i thought that was kind of sweet between a mom and daughter type of thing i do think that there is a part of kim that does actually love her kids sure but she does have you know controlling tendencies and she's very self-centered so. and a hypocrite yes and an adulteress yes and a criminal and but a drunk. other than that yes <laughs> then they go to the coffee place Girl. or to the restaurant and they start talking about mariah's upcoming video for her song called devil in a suit and tie or something we haven't heard before no we have not i wonder if it's going to release around the time of her performance and i'm dying to hear it we should react to it and react to it on patreon honey um but then they start choreographing the dance moves in the video and we've got kim being the choreographer like kicking up her wide-legged foot in them sandals (laughs) right on the right on the (laughs) right on the chair and like burlesque (laughs) movements and i'm like i don't need to see this where's the bleach for my eyes i mean and why are we doing this in public there's a table right behind (laughs) you of like senior citizens who are just trying to have an omelet and a cup of coffee mariah like to be that confident i wish I could yeah. never, though. I could never do something like that in public. Uh, That's because you're appropriate. I don't know. Yeah. If, is that confidence or narcissism? I don't, I don't know. I don't Bring think back shame. Yes. I mean, it's just, <laughs> oh, my God. The TikTok generation, just stop wherever you are and do a dance in the aisle at the Target. Oh, my God. Yeah. There's an Instagram page for that of influencers in the wild, of people <laughs> filming these influencers <laughs> filming. It's fantastic. Yeah. Go visit it. Yeah. It gave me a little bit of that. Yeah. 100%. And then we have... Ethan and Olivia in Minnesota. So Olivia comes up to the apartment. She's there by herself. Ethan told her to get started going through things, packing things up, and then he'll join her later because he doesn't want to be there at all. Doesn't want to deal with it. And Olivia's kind of talking about how she's like frustrated because Ethan still thinks that they're going to get back together because historically they have. Anytime they've taken a break, she has come back but this time she's done for real for real no cap and she doesn't understand why he doesn't get it i don't understand why he doesn't get it either quite frankly and apparently after he told her that it's not going to work and she ends up leaving she packs her shit and she goes she's like okay it's not going to work i agree i'm done like two months later he reaches out to her when she's in l.a trying to get back together with her or trying to like fish around and see if she's receptive to it. I'm like, Ethan, what are you doing? Why are you saying all of these final things? Because he's mad. And then acting surprised that it's actually happening and that Olivia said, okay, I'm going to go. Bye. And I loved when Olivia said during this scene at some point, she's like, you know, what kind of work has Ethan been doing? Like he wants me to take care of him in this moment so it's not as hard and so that it's not as um, terrible for him and his emotions, but that's something he's got to work on. I can't do that for him. And 
word. I mean, yeah. The question is, what the fuck have you been doing, Ethan? Just sitting in your lonely apartment or going down to the bar and just being alone and not going to therapy and not doing anything? I mean, that's what happens when you don't go to therapy. Like, you're stuck in your emotions and you just don't know how to deal with it. Especially, as we've called him in the past, like a repressed or shadow empath. Like, he feels a lot, but he doesn't know how to actually... I don't know. Communicate express it. it. Express it. Mm-hmm. And so then Off it's like it. delayed. I, I almost felt like it was like a delayed reaction. <clears throat> like you say all this shit in the heat of the moment because you're mad and you're not thinking clearly. And then afterwards you're like, no, but I really love her. And like, maybe we'll just fight it out and it'll be better. And it's like, no, like after a certain amount of time of fighting it out like that, you're going to push this girl away. And you did. Yep. I mean, and she's been done, obviously, for a while. She didn't want to be in this marriage the last couple seasons. Let's be real. I agree with her when she says that she was fighting for it. I mean, in her way. I don't agree with everything that she did, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I think in her way, she was definitely fighting for it. I think she was compromising. She was probably sacrificing because her values and her belief system was shifting and Ethan's was not. She was still trying to be present, though, in the relationship to see if it could work. But at some point, Ethan, if you're just going to continue to hammer it home that she's not the right one, you don't want to have kids with her it's not gonna work you know this is my list and you don't meet any of my criteria well then the bitch is gonna leave Mm -hmm. and for him to say in the kitchen i thought it was wild beatrice when he turns to her and says olivia i just want you to know that when i said all those things that day i didn't know it was going to be the last day we were together i didn't know it was going to be the end of our relationship that's called Fuck around and find out, Ethan. Yeah. You don't say these things unless you mean these things. You can't keep doing this to Olivia and expect her to come running back to you. Right. She's not going to. And she calls it out. She's like, you did that a lot. Like, you would just unload on me all of your emotions and then expect me to come back. And I did. But then after this last time, I'm not going to fucking come back. Why would I come back? And so I thought that was totally fair on her part, like what she said to him. I thought it was interesting, though, when he called her out for moving on so quickly it's like I just don't understand like how you can move on so fast it's like you don't even care and it's infuriating to me and I felt that yeah but why is everything so infuriating to you why is your default position tomato red face and getting angry like if we could just back up a little bit and if we could learn how to use our big boy words and actually express ourselves and tell people how we feel without escalating without it being super overly emotionally charged so that somebody could have some space in that conversation like imagine a world where you could have a relationship like that but no because he doesn't have the tools nor is he willing to to get the tools to learn how to express himself he goes from i'm this is getting worse i'm under the hood of my car and this is still getting worse and then pow he just blows up it's an explosion and it's a fight yeah i mean like it's true what they say though anger is a secondary emotion like underneath it all he's hurting but i'm giving him a lot of grace when i say that like i don't know he could just be a fucking hot-headed piece of shit off camera we don't really know but I just kind of felt for him in terms of like him not understanding her process because she is historically a kind of person that cuts everything and everyone out of her life when she's done and whether or not that's healthy I don't I don't think it's very healthy to just cut I think things it's, out. I think it's based if you can do it. Mm. Like if you can remove yourself from a toxic situation and cut the cords, cut the ties, and then deal with yourself and heal from that on your own, I think that's absolutely valid. I think people process shit differently. Sure. I think that's one style of processing the end of a relationship is just like, peace out. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to sit in the corner. I'm going to take care of myself. You do you. If you actually take care of yourself. But it's like with how she kind of posts passive aggressively still on Instagram. And even when she's like going through the photos, like she's still emotional. So I think there's still like a lot of shit that she has to deal with. It's just like, I don't know, something about it feels weird to me, but I can understand why it's the complete opposite for Ethan, where he obviously feels things pretty deeply and takes a long time to fucking get it through his head and like actually process it it's not good enough ethan okay you can't wait till the 11th hour and say i have some things that i i'm able to say to you now finally and she's like um no i don't have the bandwidth to listen to your bullshit anymore like that season has come and gone i mean write it in a letter and maybe i'll read it at some point like that's not how life works ethan like when you find the time finally 
to try and have a conversation, it's not guaranteed that the other person's going to be able to show up to that conversation. True. This is what you get. And you've spent the last nine months alone. And I know he's reached out via text a time or two with Olivia. But like, what else have you been doing? If you really want your wife back, if you really wanted your wife back, you would have been doing stuff to move in that direction. I see none of that. Yeah. And I think he gets it. I think when he's talking... Uh, about his mom when he goes to visit her from a couple of episodes back and he's saying you know I know that I need to be more vulnerable I know that there are parts of me that I've got to shift and I've got to fix if I'm ever going to be in a relationship like he gets it but that doesn't mean he knows how to do it yeah and I mean like we give Olivia the same grace for being young he's also young too like it takes a while to actually be able to learn how to communicate effectively for some people like it's taken me a while I've been in therapy for eight years and so uh, the only way the only reason why I am the way I am right now is through all of that therapy but it took me a while to get there and I still have a lot of times where I struggle to communicate my own emotions so it's like I can give them both grace but when he's like fighting not even really fighting her he's like saying well it could have been healthy we could have worked on things and it's like you are so idealistic like you Mm -hmm. were so naive to think that this could ever work because we've been seeing the writing on the wall for a few years honey i mean it's never gonna work idealism or is it just being completely ungrounded and not in reality like the consequences of your action have arrived the dildo of consequences (laughs) rarely arrives lubed right (laughs) so like this is your consequences and now you're flailing about because you're trying to do a last ditch effort to get this girl to feel how much you love her and I believe that he does totally. and I believe in this moment he's willing to make a ton of concessions around his value system and how that's expressed if only she would give him another chance but that time has passed I mean, I've been Olivia a million times again sure. and it is sad but she's just like I'm over it and I respected her her disposition because she was pretty cold with him and like when he asks her to look at him she turns and she's she's got a cold expression on her face but I think she's just guarding herself because she does still love him in a way and she can clearly see how much pain he is in but that's not her fucking problem no she wants to get in and get the fuck out and back to her life and she has every right to do so oh for sure I agree 100 percent and like it sucks because I feel for them both. Like, I feel for Olivia having to be in this apartment with this man who's mm. hurt her a lot. And she's dealt with a lot of bullshit from him and his family and her family and leaving this whole fundamentalist cult. And then Ethan, who's like hopelessly, stupidly in love with this girl who's so over him, like mm-hmm. so done with him. Yeah, she probably still has some love for him, whatever, but she's so fucking done yeah, with she's him. she's gone. She is out the door already and so it's just like sad and then the flashbacks of like all of their moments over the seasons like i felt for them i got misty i was sad and olivia looking at the pictures and crying i mean i've got a box of pictures from my second marriage over there that like i don't go through because i will get very emotional totally that doesn't mean she's in love with him it's just that she can still cherish the memories for what they were and she even says like if i could go back and change the decisions that i made for example marrying ethan i would not do that yeah. i would not be the person that i am today if i didn't go through these experiences and they're valuable because i learned yeah which again i'm paraphrasing but I think that's a very enlightened point of view. I agree. And she was like looking through the photos and crying. And she's like, I just see two kids. Yeah. Like just figuring it out. And I felt that. Me too. Because I got married to your daughter at 20. So like it's hard being married when you're young. And you're having to grow up together and learn how to be in a marriage. Like that shit's fucking hard. Mm -hmm. It's not for the faint of heart. So yeah, I'm glad that they are done because they were never going to work. I mean, she's way off this way. He's way off that way. It was never going to work. So Ethan being like, well, it could have been healthy. Could it have been? No, not really. If you haven't done anything to change, then no, it's just going to go back to the same old thing. If you went to therapy, maybe. Yeah. If you guys went to couples She don't therapy, want to, maybe. though. And that's the thing about women. Like, you push us and push yeah. us and push us. And most of us will tell you, like, you're fucking pushing me. Or this is untenable. I cannot live like this anymore. Which Olivia kept telling him, I can't do this. This is not working for me. But there comes a point when we just hit the wall. It's like, okay, I'm I done. told you. I tried to communicate. I tried to work on this. I am Audi 500. Yep. 
five thousand yeah five three thousand <laughs> whatever know. i am out of here and you will never ever ever get us back yep we're just done and that's where olivia is yep and poor ethan is not no and his letter to her though i thought was kind of sweet where he's just like i apologize for like the things that i did and that if she ever needs anything i'll be there for her and i'll always love her and i hope she can find like what she needs because i couldn't give that to her and i'm like damn i couldn't man. or i didn't yeah like both. he could have but he didn't yeah so good on you for acknowledging the things that you could have done but that you didn't do to save your marriage and i'm like glad that he is able to mm -hmm. say that and express that i think that shows a little bit from him it's not much mm -hmm. but it's showing a i little wish bit i heard a bit more from olivia on that for somebody Agreed. who's like really wanting a specific apology from mariah like in this moment she could have been a bit more specific but i'm pretty sure they probably had a multitude of conversations before where maybe these things got brought up and she's like I don't want to go into that I just want to stick to the broad strokes and get my stuff and leave yeah I don't know I don't know either that's but it's like, sad that's kind of where my problem with was with her coping mechanism of like just cutting everything out like she's straight up said in this episode I don't want to have any conversations I don't want to hear anything else that he has to say mm -hmm. from me from him I just want to get a letter and leave and get all my shit and leave and I'm mm -hmm. like well I mean he is trying to apologize though like he's trying to like own up to some of the shit but maybe she didn't want to like be manipulated by his emotions or like even put herself in a space where she mm -hmm. would be feeling some kind of conflicting way of like oh he's saying i'm sorry so maybe i should yeah get but back he's not owed an audience exactly i mean your apology is for you it's really not even Facts. for her like she doesn't ever have to read that but you know hopefully for you ethan that got you some awareness and it helped you helped you to process what's happening but like olivia does not need to be there for that no and we see in the season preview he's dating he's getting some other good. chick's number so good. i'm like she's moving on you can move on mm -hmm. too dude you don't have to be critical but whatever it was sad it was sad and at the end of the, the day it was sad he signs the divorce papers mm -hmm. and it's done so that's great good finally now olivia get off my television for real she ain't going nowhere though no mm -mm. apparently it's like in her contract or something that's why she's on this season. sure but everybody's like why is she on this show yeah it's wild yep but anyway so we have the rest of the season preview olivia is wearing a red wig she's for some reason i don't know probably she's doing burlesque dancing okay <laughs> <laughs> she's in the driver's seat of her own life she's got a special guest in sedona it's probably her boyfriend mm -hmm. well, or maybe it's lydia but they kind of like pull back a curtain or something mm -hmm. and somebody walks out and it looks like a very thin armed person yeah. so it's either it's probably lydia grace it's lydia grace and or it's somebody else yeah with not a whole lot of muscles a producer plant. <laughs> who knows and then ethan's rapping with some guy at the gym okay i don't know why we got to see this don't care why do all the plath kids have to sing we don't need to hear that um mariah books a family concert and ken's there and barry's there and kim's hoping for a fight right which is great right and says a lot about her personality uh-huh kind of shitty and then Kim kind of talks to Ethan about the divorce. And he's like, I don't, I don't know how to feel about all this. Mm -hmm. Mending shit with my mom. Like, uh, why do we got to do this? I'm intrigued to see that. Me as well. And of course, he's asking for some pretty woman's number. Uh-huh. And hopefully we get to see that. I would love to see that. Another great installment on the Welcome to Plathville Season 6 Journey, Beatrice. I love it. I enjoyed it. Now let's get into some unexpected. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's get into this week's episode of Unexpected. Yeah. Episode 11. Okay. So we start with Lily and Lawrence and this whole bachelor bachelorette party. I thought we boycotted them. Do we want to talk about them? Do I, I don't care about them. I literally don't. I, it's going to be so stupid because she tells him no strippers at his bachelor party. But then literally the next episode, she right. has a male stripper at her bachelorette party. It reminds me of Clayton. Yes. With his little hands. Ali. The stripper gate. <laughs> yeah. From 90 yeah. Day Fiance. And I'm snoring, baby. I'm so over it laura although i did like how lawrence was just smoking weed and drinking on that ross faded i mean that's great <laughs> going to the steakhouse Love with it. his two dads or stepdad and whatever yeah lily's dads and then the brother i thought that was funny that was great then we have poor 
Kaylee. Oh my god. Girl. This was horrible. I felt bad for her. I am not familiar with like the medical vibes, the medical industry, medical yeah. practices. But that seems wiggity whack mm-hmm. that you would keep this kid in the hospital for, I don't know, three days, laboring for three days, putting her in all of these posi- positions, kicking her leg off the hospital bed, getting her on all fours, trying to get this baby to turn around. Like, just give the kid a C-section. I and know. how do we not know that this baby Easton is as big as it is until the final hour? I don't freaking know. I don't know if it's because they induced her and so maybe they have to like wait for the medication or something. But I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's torture. It's horrible. Like this poor girl is just writhing around in pain. Becky's in and out doing meth. Her mom is there trying to help her. Fucking Graham is like crying and puking on the side. Or sleeping in on his phone. Or sleeping on his phone. I just felt so fucking bad for her. And for all of that 50 hours of labor just for her to have an emergency C-section. Why couldn't we get there more quickly? Does anybody out in the audience even know? Like why would they even do that she's a very very small girl yes. just generally speaking she's only 15 or 16 years yeah. old how do we not i mean i thought we could tell how big a baby was gonna be by the time we gave birth and i i mean isn't there like a way to image and yes. or like digitally tell where the baby is like for me i mean even if i'm healthy and my baby can come down a shoot i'd prefer a c-section i mean seriously just, like, just put under yeah. i don't want to be here i want to wake up and have a baby for real why did we have to do that i felt so bad for her i mean that was so fucking traumatic and then for the doctor to be like yeah she wasn't ever going to be able to give birth to that baby in the first place she's that too small was wild i'm like what were then we doing why then? did we do all of that just to run up the bill or something I to mean, give her all of this medicine to have all of these nurses in there helping her like why are we doing this to this poor girl the only thing i can think of is like maybe her parents and her were like very opposed to having a c-section so like maybe they were just like it didn't no. seem like that but though. i know i don't know why would you do that I don't know. I got scared for people giving birth. I hope it's not like that at the hospitals. That's fucking horrible. I mean, for me, I got the Pitocin. Yeah. I was induced after I think I was like a week late or something. And I got the Pitocin. And from the time that I got the Pitocin to the time that I gave birth, I want to say it was seven hours. It was super reasonable. Wow. It was very painful, but it was super reasonable. But I'm telling you, if it had gone on any longer, I'd have been like, cut me open for real get this baby out of my body seriously after seven hours i can't even imagine 50 hours of la- some women they go for days but I know. it's not with like hugely terrible contractions right it's like while you're slowly dilating and yeah. there's contractions but they're not so fucking violent right it looks like kaylee is having these terrible violent whole body contractions for hours people can die from that i know I just can't fucking imagine that she went through all of that. I just felt so bad. Me too. I was like really sad for this whole thing. But like, I guess next episode we'll get to actually see baby Easton and his big old head. Okay. Must be a big head, honey. I mean, he must be like a huge baby Mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like, this sucks. I feel bad for her. And then we have Anaya and Day Day. Yeah. Talking about the military. They have a lunch date. They take little Anias. Yeah with them and he's just a little dream an angel he's cute he's not crying or anything so they get to have a meal together but essentially they're there to discuss a day day going off to boot camp in texas in the air force and it really seems like anaya wants no part of that life yeah uh she makes a few bad comments about men in general for example all men cheat and or maybe day day's here now but he's gonna start disappearing over time like you can just tell that that toxic ass mother of hers ashley has visited all of her toxicity onto anaya and now she's worried about what's gonna happen with day day now I'm not saying she's wrong. (laughs) I mean, he's going to go into the military. And statistically speaking, he's probably going to cheat. And she's going to probably cheat because, you know, Jody's always around. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that reference is? Mm -mm. I'll tell you later. (laughs) Like, it's very common for both parties to cheat when somebody's in the military. So that's, 
it's not unlikely to happen and she doesn't want it to happen. But at the same time, don't we want to have a man who wants to provide for us as a family? Right. And why can't we just like expect that he's going to do the right thing? Like it seems like he's trying to be a present father. He's trying to be a decent boyfriend. Like he's trying at 17. Like yeah. he's literally a child. So like can we give him the benefit of the doubt? Like no. why do we have to put him down and be like you're just going to cheat? Yeah. All men cheat. Not in Ashley's world. I hate that. I think Anaya really loves him, though. Yeah. I think she really wants him to be there. I think she depends upon him. Yeah. And her baby is so little. She wants him to be there. So I can see both sides of that. But I also think like she's just been programmed to expect the very worst from him and all men. And it's unfortunate because I do think Day Day's trying to do the right thing. Oh, for sure. And I can totally understand Anaya's point of view because your daughter wanted to go into the military early on in our relationship. And I straight up told her, I'm like, I can't do that. Like, Mm -hmm. if you want to do that, that's totally cool. But, like, I can't be a military wife. I I literally am so codependent. (laughs) It's a difficult life. Yeah. I can't fucking do it. I'm sorry. I didn't want to do it. And she was, like, sad. But now, like, eight years later, she's like, I could never do that. (laughs) I Mm -hmm. could never be away from you guys for that long. That would be terrible. So I understand Anaya, but I just wish she didn't put him down. Yeah, you don't have to put him down. Like, come on. You don't have to call into question his innate character. Exactly. Like, give him an opportunity to show you what he can do. Exactly. I mean, and if he cheats on you, if he leaves you, then we can criticize Day Day all day long. But, like, it seems like he's trying to do the very best that he can. Yeah, I agree. And the last but not least, we have Jenna and her whole baby daddy drama. Yeah, not a whole lot changed. No. But I guess Andrea, JJ's bitch mom, got her a new lawyer. Bitch ass. (laughs) Oh, ass. (laughs) got her a new uh murder lawyer right yeah and so hopefully this better more murder lawyer will help jenna win custody or whatever of luke be able to live in myrtle like uh, reach a custody agreement where she doesn't have to stay in altoona pennsylvania yep so we'll see how that turns out i was reading on reddit because i'm in the unexpected subreddit oh yeah and there's lots of conversations about the way jenna has been pitting aiden and jj against each other Mm. because from what i can glean and please correct me if i'm wrong and if you have the information on this send her a dm and let her know because it's not clear to me yeah so i'm just going to tell you what my understanding is but it sounds like JJ and Jenna had a falling out at some point in their relationship and she went back to Aiden (gasps) and Aiden and her even like took a trip together. She posted pictures of them. Stop it. And while she was gone, JJ made a few posts and or said some stuff to her that was extremely racist, N-word motivated, like super terrible And I think she talked about it on TikTok or Instagram, like the shit JJ was doing. Now all of that is scrubbed off of the internet, so you can't find it anymore. And now they're pretending that everything's great and it never happened, and they are back together. So it feels like Jenna actually is bouncing back and forth between Aiden and JJ, which is very interesting, don't you think? Um, That's very interesting. And I'm going to go uncensored a little bit. Okay. Okay. For these raccoons. Mm. Let's come back from Uncensored. By the way, if you want to hear our Uncensored bits, you got to go to Reality TV Cringe on our Patreon and sign up because it's only for the raccoons. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if Jenna has actually done that, but I think that she has. <laughs> I can kind of see it. So yeah, Aiden's going to want to lawyer up. And so yeah, maybe Aiden had a different expectation of what the relationship was going to be like. And then you totally went back to JJ and now he lawyered up and he's taking you to court and he's going to laugh the entire time. Yikes. Yeah. Well, and some people have commented on our YouTube saying that this is totally Aiden's MO. Like he loves to fuck with Jenna, mm-hmm. but it would make a little bit more sense if he was fucking with her because... They kind of were back and forth. And she's been fucking with him too in her own way. So she's not blameless here. If it is in fact true, y'all tell me what you know. Mm Because, you know, we love the trash. We like to eat in the dumpster. Mm. Okay. And then we have the preview. I think we only have like two more episodes of the season. All right. I think we're almost done. But we have Anaya going to a party and Day Day won't go with her for some reason. Okay. I don't care. Um, Kaylee ends up getting her C-section 
doctor said she would never have the baby anyway. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Fuck you. Um, Emily moves back in with her dad because her and Taryn are fighting. I wonder how long she was actually living with Taryn before. They- I want to know. And I want to know what did those fights consist of and or look like? Because you have to have like a whole lot of audacity to uh-huh. be all the way ensconced in some other woman's home and she's feeding you and housing you and providing for you and you're fighting with her all the time. And the way Taryn describes it is like um, Emily was treating her like they don't breathe the same air. I don't know what that means, but I hope we get into it. I bet Taryn was trying to help her and like trying to give her motherly advice. And Emily was like, fuck you. You don't know what you're talking about. I bet Taryn was getting her back up over how Emily treats Nate and was probably interceding on behalf of her son, Mm. who is a battered wife. (laughs) (laughs) For real. Poor Nate. Yeah. And then we have Lily having a male bachelor or male stripper at her bachelorette party. Right. Sitting on the couch, getting all upset with Lawrence because he might go to a strip club and meanwhile some dude is grinding up on her and she thinks it's great has his dick in her face and it's like an old guy too ew <laughs> like what all of these doing? strippers on all of these TLC shows they're old and they're gross yuck well no. that's it could never be me Beatrice absolutely not all right well is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here well if you love our podcast I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. It Bye. really helps us grow the pod, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We will be back next week on Monday to talk Sister Wives. We are in season five, and make sure to come back for that. But until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.